Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining. A very healthy conversation, hopefully for you this morning. Now, some, something I think many of us take for granted is our eyesight. Well, maybe not Zoe and I particularly. <laughs> it's currently Eye Care Awareness Month, which is very important. It's vital that we know what eye care health actually is and how to look after our eyes. We only get two of them. The focus of Eye Care Awareness Month is to raise awareness about the prevention and treatment of avoidable blindness. And joining us is optometrist and Mr. SA 2023 Top 10 finalist, Tian Massey. Tian, welcome. Thank you so much for being here, my friend. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Um, I love it when there are awareness weeks and awareness months and eye care being one of them. As an optometrist, what do you hope people will learn from this month mm. of awareness? Yes, yeah, so we're using this month, it's an opportunity for us to really talk about the things that we take for granted. Yeah. So it's important to uplift the, pa the patients and to make them realize that it's very important to, to do your routinely eye checks and to make sure that you get your optometrist and not regret stuff that we don't take, that we take for granted every day. Completely. I mean, we, we, we can joke and crack jokes about, you know, the, the debacle around the Springbok jersey, but in a weird way, it's got a lot of people thinking about exactly that, something that we deal with every day, that you only notice something is wrong retrospectively, which means we should be doing annual checks at least. Why is that so important? Well, I think, obviously, as optometrists, we make, we make patients see better, but I think we... It goes further than that. We look at the full comprehensive eye health. Right. We have fundus cameras in the practice where we have a look at the back of the eye and we look at your blood vessels. We check your pressures. Uh -huh. And um, we use that to also look at the optic nerve at the back of the eye. So it's a very comprehensive eye test. And we can, if we see diseases and we see stuff that we can really uh, do something about it, or I can refer you to an eye specialist, uh, we can really help prevent diseases that can be sight threatening. Okay, and I think that's something we often take for granted. It's only until you get something in your eye or there's a bit of an infection that you actually realize, hang on, I'm taking my eyesight for granted. When it comes to, you know, when people wear contact lenses or glasses, the first thing they say, oh, I'm nearsighted or oh, I'm farsighted. <laughs> and half the time, I don't know what they are referring to. Please just unpack the two different sights like AC, for us. like ACDC, yeah? <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, well, farsighted and nearsighted, um, we also call it the fancy word is myopia and hyperopia. So yeah. some patients, which are minus prescriptions, those patients can't see far. And then most patients um, over the age of 40, we call it presbyopia, as the patients would usually say their arms are getting too short. <laughs> so <laughs> then you know you've hit your 40. And unfortunately, it's something that we can't run uh, from. So yeah. over the age of 40, we, we have to help the patients to read close. Unfortunately, there's a, there's a muscle in the eye that's attached to a lens. You can just imagine these muscles have been pulling on these lens 10 million times a day for... Yeah, and, and then when we talk about frame rates in TV, your eyes literally having to adjust every time there's a new frame on exactly. TV, your poor little eyes, oh, okay, I got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. It's yes, hectic. exactly. And that obviously that lens also uses, uh, loses its elasticity. So it doesn't work as you were 21 years old. So we use lenses to help patients actually see. Um, but to get back to your question, yeah, plus patients' prescription usually struggle more with close and your minus patients struggle with distance. I'm a minus patient. Um, yeah, I'm a, I, I, it's weird, I'm a little bit of both <laughs> because I'm over 40, 40. but yeah, man, you see, I, I'm, I'm beginning to understand the algorithm. The joy is on that side of the equation, there, there is a lot of help at hand and you guys are quite empowered in terms of how you can improve a person's eyesight. I think where most of us get terrified is the notion of eye disease and losing our sight. When do the symptoms that we've seen listed there, the stuff that you're looking out for, when does a red flag suddenly jump off the page? Well, I think one of the biggest red flags is obviously patients coming into the practice and noticing that they have sudden um, vision loss. I think yeah, anything that's quick. sudden, we have to look into very, very, very deeply. And then also, obviously, family histories of patients that know there's diabetes in the family, a, a grandpa, a father. Sure. Uh, so obviously, with the fundus cameras and the, the retinal images, we have a look at the blood vessels. And uh, we make sure that there's no bleeding of, of blood vessels at the back of the eye, which is, which is diabetes. And um, obviously also patients um, with the normal aging process, the lens, as I said, gets thicker, uh, which mm. if it gets thick enough, it, it causes cataracts. And then patients obviously can't see. Um, especially, usually you see that more at night. So elderly patients would say that they really struggle to see at night. 
And um, yeah, so it's, it's, we do a comprehensive full test where we check those pressures and we look inside the eyes. We have a slit lamp in the practice where we look at your lens just to make sure that everything is healthy and if it's necessary... Really comprehensive, yeah. Yes, if it's really necessary, we refer to an eye specialist. Um, I always say rather safe than sorry. Oh, yes. completely. Especially if it comes. Eyes, yeah. yeah, especially with the eyes. Now, you're also a finalist for Mr. South Africa this year. Can you tell me, how does it feel knowing that as an optometrist, you can also use that platform to be able yeah. to do good? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's an amazing platform that, that, that I can use. I've, it's always been a big part of my heart, actually, to do the charities out of the practices. And to have Mr. South Africa platform to do this, what I'd love to do on such a bigger scale, oh, is, sure. it's great. So I think the, the focus should be the youth. I think um, children don't always speak. And yeah, um, they don't have the words, I think yeah. their eyesight and their problems are overlooked. Um, so in practice, what we do is we test all, all children from the age to six to 12, we test for free um, to make sure that we don't miss stuff when they grow up where education can be a problem and where they cannot reach their full potential. I love that. It's empowerment, man. And the thing with like someone like myself who only in university realised, hang on, my eyesight's not great, you don't know what you don't know. And, <laughs> and, and the thing is, like, I thought everything was normal. Walking down Victoria Street in Stellenbosch and I see the greenery, it was only when I got my glasses that I saw the leaves and I started to cry because I, I was like, I've missed out on so much. I was like, what players have numbers on their backs? <laughs> Really? Is that it? Honestly, so every football player wears his number on his back this whole time. Um, no, I get you. And there is often a moment where we have to rely on our studio crew to bring a TV a little bit closer or something like that. We are here for ocular health. So don't wait until you're staring at the Springboks jersey trying to figure out, is it mint green? Is it normal green? Is it, is it green at all? Is it turquoise? Um, don't wait till then to get your eyes tested. Think about doing it today, at least once a year. We need to have that annual checkup. Uh, but we're not going to let you go anywhere. We need to explore this Mr. SA thing just a little bit more and yes our, our health continues but right now we've got a multiple world record holder in the house it's my feel -good Welcome back to a Health Tuesday on your Feel Good Breakfast Show. A little bit earlier, we chatted about Eye Care Awareness Month and why it is so important to understand one's eye health and the prevention of avoidable blindness. It's that easy. Just connect with your optometrist, and that's what we've done. He also happens to be a Mr. SA Top 23 or Top 10 2023 finalist as well, Tian Massain, and a great now friend of the show as well. And he's going to take us through some of the different preventable eye diseases and then demonstrate on our Zozo um, some tests uh, to see just how bad her eyes really are. No, she's got her contacts in, which I shouldn't have told anyone, just for your Fine, sake. Fine, I, I can share my minus three vision. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, we, we all have to compensate. That's how we roll on this on this set. Uh, Tian, thank you so much for, for sticking around. I love the little bag of tricks that you brought with us. Um, I just want to, we touched on it, myopia. That is yeah. minus, yeah? Short-sightedness. Short-sightedness, Which yeah. is what Zoe is. So how do we go about, first of all, ascertaining that a person is, in fact, short-sighted? Yeah, so we do a full comprehensive eye test and um, with the autorefractor, when, when, when we test, we, we, we go to a ferropter to the testing room and we do a full test and we, we see what the patient's prescription is of their eyes, either plus, minus, and then astigmatism, which we'll, we'll touch on a bit later. Um, it's, it's, it's funny that she's a minus prescription because I actually want to show how, how a patient will see that is a minus prescription okay. because a minus three prescription is quite strong. It yeah. is. I'm and, blind. Um, <laughs> yeah, so when we stand here, everything here would be blurred. Um, so, but a minor prescription, we obviously, we correct with minus lenses. And um, so here I have a full trial case and I have a trial frame. So we have many lenses in my trial case with millions of configurations, which I configure and then put a minus prescription in I the trial frame. I love that. So you really can become Definitely. so nuanced with how much you aid a person or balance that back out. That's Definitely. brilliant. I have a question because whenever I go to the optometrist, they ask me which one's better, A or B. One or two. <laughs> I always feel like you're trying tricking me. Is that the case? Or <laughs> do, you, do you learn how to be tricky? Like, yeah. it's like, I always feel like I'm there for an honesty test. Like, <laughs> which is it? A or B? And I'm like, oh, no, it looks the same. No, I think they're aware people try and cheat. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can't, you can't cheat. You know all the tricks in the book. And basically, uh, I always said it's actually a joke, but 
I actually know exactly what to do. I'm just keeping you busy for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're just getting your it's money's just gonna, worth. It's, it's as simple as that. I just got to justify the fee at the end. OK, so how do we begin the, the mix and match process? Yeah, so obviously, when after I've done the full eye test, I put the prescription in my trial frame. In the case, you have your contact lenses I on. I do have my contact lenses on. Definitely. But okay, so when I've tested the, uh, the patient's eyes, then I will get, come back to my trial case. In her case, which is a minus three, do you have astigmatism? Do you know? I have an astigmatism in my right eye. Okay, great. So astigmatism for the some patients who don't know, the clients who don't know, it's basically just the shape of the eye being a bit more rugbyable than sockable. Ah, uh, okay, so that okay. changes the way the lens works, Definitely. then obviously the way that light is drawn in. Oh, because okay. one of my goals a few years ago was to have my eyes lasered, and I saved up for it, and then the optometrist is like, you can't have your eyes lasered because of your astigmatism. Is that true, people that have astigmatisms? Um, surgery, surgery won't correct it? Definitely not to, always to a degree, yes. Okay. Definitely. But I mean, a patient that's a minus three, minus four patient, that's the perfect patient for LASIK surgery. Okay. Um, we just need to make sure and practice that the, that the prescription is stable. Okay. Um, which we don't want to do LASIK surgery and then I see you in any way in a few years, I need to make you glasses. Okay, yeah, for sure. Definitely. I love that. Yeah, so in this case, so if the minus three prescription, I will just take my minus three lenses and I'll put them into the trial frame. I love Oopsie. this. You, you must be present for that moment when this when the penny drops so people can actually see again or Definitely. see properly. And it's something, like you say, you don't know if you don't know, but once you do get that back, it must be quite a beautiful thing to be a part of that process with people. Absolutely. In our final year, we go on the Pelopepa train, which is the medical train, and they just they, they send you into the very, very rural areas of South Africa. And you stand on the platform on the train and there's just thousands of people sitting there and they come from far. Some they people wait, sleep hey? in front of the train to see you the next morning. And when you put that pair of glasses on those patients' eye, from six years old to 96 years old, and the tears just start Same flowing. Thing, a, it does something to your heart that you just know you're living That's your passion special, and your, pur your purpose, definitely. Oh, I love that. So right, so sure. what I've done, I've, I've, usually what I do in practice, I make patients see better. Today <laughs> I'm going to actually show you guys what it actually feels like to have some of the eye diseases. Okay. okay. To, oh, cool. And to not be able to see as clear. Okay. So, so I'm this, dying to have that on my face. Yeah, the... so this is, you have your contact lens in, so it's going to be extremely blurry. This is what you actually see without your, your, your glasses. Things. Oh, wow. Okay. So I'm going to put these on for you. I look like Gadget Girl. Yeah. Go, go, Gadget. Do, do. Uh, that's the right song. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Hey, how does it feel to be me, Zoe? Hey, can you, can you distinguish my facial features? <laughs> I can see, I can see. It, you know, when you get a new prescription or the optometrist, like, like when you get a stronger prescription, is it normal to feel like the world's a little wobbly? In the beginning? Definitely. It's obviously new, new prescription lenses we have to get used to. But in practice, what I do is I try to make that gap as small as possible. Okay. Obviously, I want you to see clear, but I want you to see comfortable. Don't want to be wobbling and falling. Exactly. I don't want you to be able to see up to Cape Town from Pretoria, but only for 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah, and you, you have can't headache. drive. <laughs> Definitely. Okay. Definitely. I get that. I mean, there's so many touch points, and we're going to keep your details up so people can connect with you. Two questions. Do you wear the sash while you practice? I don't. OK, <laughs> so that's the first thing. Sorry, guys, so don't, don't expect the sash. Um, what would you recommend if we did one thing to look after our eye health now? As an optometrist who is driving this every day, yeah. what would you recommend that we do? I think in today's life, we live in a digital age. Yeah. Um, I mean, we on, if we're not on our computers, laptops, we're on our cell phones, For tablets. Sure. Yeah. Um, so obviously what we see, especially with the kids of the new generation, I mean, the parents just give them tablets, yeah. give them eyes. Can I take that off? Yes, you can. I Thank can imagine you. that. It's quite horrible for you. <laughs> so you're starting to feel quite isolated. <laughs> going to pass out. Yeah. Emphasis on I. Yeah. Yeah, so we are um, really trying to get into the youth and to help them with amazing lenses because that, that myopia we're talking about, that, that nearsightedness is increasing rapidly. So we're trying to see if we can stabilise it in, in the children. So we have amazing lenses that we can... We can't always stop it, we, we can try and slow it down. Yeah, and um, in the eye muscle. Yes. Yeah. Good. Uh, That's yeah. basically what we're trying to do, yeah.
there are a lot of parents here that say you must eat your carrots. It's good for eyesight. Is that Very true? Very good question. Yeah. Do carrots help your eyes? Yes or no? Yes or no? Just say yes, bro. Otherwise, I'm any parents... I'm going to have to say yes. Yeah. There we go. Eat, eat, your, eat, your, <laughs> eat your veggies. And your spinach for that matter as well. Uh, buddy, thank you so much. All the best of luck for Thanks this so other much. journey. I think Thanks you're going to so be much. able to help a lot of people if you get this gig. So I really hope that comes off for you. Um, and thank you on behalf of everyone that you've helped so far. Um, it really is as easy as connecting <laughs> with your optometrist and then getting the right advice. A whole new world, literally a whole new world could be waiting for you. But thank you so much, my Thanks for having me.